It's time for some Christmas carol singing. Would you please turn in your hymnals to number 180, O Little Town of Bethlehem. That's carol 180.
about this state that God has blessed us with. As we come into God's presence this morning, we do hope that uh, you were with us last evening as we shared a cookies and cocoa here at the tree lighting uh, in Percocy. If you happen to have been here or stopped by, you will have had the opportunity to stand by a fire pit and warm your hands, to uh, take some pictures in the uh, photo opportunity that was prepared by Nancy Rourke and Wendy Bosco on the side of the church, uh, to share in the delicious cocoa last night. Did anybody here have cocoa last night? There's a few of us, okay. Um, and some wonderful cookies. So we thank everyone. If you donated cookies, if you came out for part of the festivities, uh, or if you shared in the evening in any way, we had a wonderful evening. Uh, I know there were over 300 people that stopped here uh, outside to pick up cookies and cocoa, and um, it was just a phenomenal night, so we thank you for that. So we gathered this morning, I would ask if there are announcements that you would like to share, and if so, I would invite you to come up to the microphone here at the Advent Group, so let folks work their way up there if you'd like. Next Sunday, the 12th, um, during worship will be our Christmas pageant. Uh, we invite you to come and be part of that time with us. We have a uh, unique experience prepared for all of us for next Sunday, so we look forward to that. Um, next Sunday after the pageant will be our congregational meeting for the adoption of the budget and election of consistory members for 2022. Um, please plan to stay with us for that time. Also, next Sunday morning when you come into church, uh, one of the Girl Scout troops that meets downstairs uh, has asked if they may sing Christmas carols for you uh, as you come in. So they will be on the Arch Street steps when you come in next week. Uh, please stop and, and give note of that. Uh, and they are collecting canned goods for fish uh, as they sing. So next Sunday when you come into church, uh, please consider bringing canned goods with you. I want to say thank you this morning to Sparky Heckler. Sparky brought us a Jared box to show you. So this is what one looks like completed. Um, this is our mission project for Christmas, and these boxes go out uh, to pediatric patients in local hospitals. So you can see that she has decorated her box, she's put the label on it for boy or girl, and the age group, and then she's covered it in stickers and put some tissue paper inside of it. So if you want to see one of these, It'll be up here after worship. Please feel free to come up and see how it's done uh, if you have any questions about that. There's two up there actually now. I oh. See, I see one under the tree. Oh, yes, there is one under the tree as well. <coughs> the Historical Society is here on Tuesday evening at 6 30. Just please take note of that if you have activity in the church uh, in the week ahead. Are there other announcements that we would like to share this morning? God is good all the time. I invite you to uh, come into a spirit of prayer and worship as we come into God's presence and listen to the words of our poem for this morning. Words for the beginning. If I can give you words for the very beginning, for the stretches and the yawns and the opening of eyes, for the first takeoff and the first smile. In the first verse of your lips, I would say, Oh dear child, how you are loved. But the thing about love is you can't stop there. So I will go on to say, You are strong, stronger than you think, and you are not alone. Look at these parents who adore you, and these doctors and nurses fighting for you. And you are enough, already enough. You haven't done anything yet. You've just been here, breathing, sleeping, and already you have And then I might say, this world is a mess, but it is your home, and you can make it better. So always try to make it better. And maybe, most important of all, there is a love that is bigger than my understanding, that moves through this world, and I call that love God. And that love is here, here in this room, and now they'll know your name by heart. Those are the words I would say to you as you stretch and yawn and open your eyes on the very first morning of your very first day. Let that be your foundation, like Zechariah 
did for John. Let love be your beginning. Friends, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join me in our call to worship. If life was a home, then we would pray. May love be the foundation. May God be the cornerstone. May the spirit be the windows ushering light in. And may hope be the walls holding us together. In this hour of worship, let us work toward building that home together. We may not know the path ahead, but God is here even now. Let us give thanks for the foundation of love. Let us worship holy God. Come, let us worship. Oh, come. 
foundation of our faith and our lives, we gather together around the candle of peace. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. Peace that rests between us and our grief. Peace around our anxiety. Peace between us and our self-criticism. Peace amidst our relationships. Peace at the core of our being. Peace hovering through and in our world. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. Holy God, when John was born, Zechariah leaned down and whispered words of love into his ear. We know that you did the same for us, day in and day out, yet we failed to hear it. We forget that in the beginning we were made good. We doubt that we could possibly be enough. We hustle for our self-worth and wear ourselves out aiming for perfection. We deflect words of praise. We hide behind shiny first impressions. Forgive us. Trusting our worth is the hardest job. Open our ears as you open our hearts so that we might rest on the foundation of goodness you have laid for us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Last week we gathered and we learned uh, the simple <laughs> Hope being this symbol. So do you remember sign language for hope? Today as we gather, we are going to remember the candle of peace. And so we do that. You already know this symbol. So you're, you're a step ahead here. So I'm going to invite you to put your hands together. You're going to turn them and move them out and then push it away. And that's, um, that's the symbol for being calm. And so, peace. So the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. I invite you to turn and pass the peace to those around you. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. And all God's people then say, Amen. Friends, this morning we are sharing in the blessing of teddy bears. Um, we do this as a ritual each year, as a way of um, remembering that in this journey of life we have those that comfort us and we have companions along the way. And so uh, this morning for our children's time, if anyone brought bears with you, I invite you to bring them forward. Um, we'll be blessing those. And then there have been some bears that are donated that will then be passed on uh, to some of the residents of our local um, areas, our local um, residential homes. And so, and so um, they will be blessed and then distributed later. So I'm going to invite you all to grab one of the little mats, and we'll sit down here in the front. You guys want to go down to the floor? Okay, let's come right down here. All right, so we'll do these uh, one at a time, and uh, we'll go from there. So who would like to go first? Who's bear would you like to do first? Alice, you're right here. Let's do you. What's your bear's name? Lady? Lady's cute. Lady is a ladybug, because you can't see them. <laughs> All right, let's offer a prayer for Lady. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon Lady this morning. We thank you for the uh, warmth and the blessing that she brings to Alice, for the comfort, for those moments of quiet uh, reflection with her, the ways in which um, we find peace and, and calm. Um, Trusting that you are always with us and being reminded by those things that we cuddle with that keep us warm. God's blessings be upon Lady this day and upon Alice as they seek to walk in your ways. Amen. All right. Jaina? Does your bear have a name? No? Okay. All right. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we ask this blessing upon Jane and Spare, that as you watch over her, that you might help her as she snuggles with the bear to remember your presence uh, that surrounds us, us each day and keeps us in your peace. Fill her in your love, we pray, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Jeffrey, can we bless Bear? Right, you hold him, and I'll just bless him, right? Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon Bear this day. We thank you for the comfort and the support that he brings for Jeffrey. We pray that you continue to watch over him, strengthen him, and keep him in your peace, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Thank you, bud. This is Sophie, right? Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon Sophie this morning for the love that she brings to heaven, for the ways in which uh, she brings comfort in his life. We pray that you continue to uh, surround him in your peace and fill him in your love, for we ask it in your name. Amen. All right. Did any of the adults bring bears you would like blessed? All right. You guys can head back to your seats. And I'm going to invite everyone to join me as we offer a blessing upon the bearers that have been brought forward uh, to donate. Okay. So please join me. God of new life and new presence, may these symbols of joy and love from our childhood and lives now fill others with Christian love and blessing, reaching out to the lonely, the sick, the grieving, the infirmed, wherever they may be on their journeys in life. Fill all who receive these bears with your hope, peace, and joy, which is ours in this Advent season. With hugs and love we pray in Christ. Amen. Oh, and I had little teddy bears to show you, too. Here you go. Everybody say aw. Aww. Friends, we turn our attention now to the reading of Holy Scripture. This morning's lesson comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, verses 57 through 80. And here we listen to the words that are familiar to us in the birth of John the Baptist. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to the father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill region of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant, David. As he spoke through the mouth of his old prophets of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us, that we might be rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God. The dawn from on high will break upon us, 
to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Here ends the lesson. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it's the season of the year when um, the television networks are in full swing with all kinds of Christmas specials. Do any of you watch Christmas specials? Anybody watch TV these days? Okay. So there's lots of Christmas specials that come on this time of year. One of my favorites is a Charlie Brown Christmas. Have any of you ever seen a Charlie Brown Christmas? Show of hands. Oh, so you know this show. Okay. So Charlie Brown um, is always fascinating to me. And, um, you know, Charlie Brown has this catchphrase. Do you remember what it is? Good grief. Good grief. And I can still picture that, that scene in Charlie Brown Christmas where they're sitting there and they're contemplating um, what is Christmas and why do we do this. And Charlie Brown just doesn't have the spirit of Christmas. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand it. Why are we doing all these things? It's kind of a, um, well, I, I don't know if any of you have ever seen Saturday Night Live, but he's kind of like a Debbie Downer. You know? You, you get into a group, everybody's all excited, and he's like, wah, wah. <laughs> This season has a way for us of either putting us in a really high place where the energies are flowing and where there's excitement and we see the lights and we get our hearts leaping and we hear the Christmas carols and the energy starts to build and we get ourselves all geared up uh, for this magical thing that God is doing in our midst. Um, or we may find ourselves more like Charlie Brown with a wah, wah every time. Uh, we run into something in this Christmas season. How we experience that um, not only affects our own experience of the season, right? But it can have an effect on those around us as well. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been around someone during the Christmas season where your spirits are really high and they're wah, wah. Has that ever happened to anybody? Or the opposite is true. You're, you're in that, and you get around somebody, and they're like Buddy the Elf in Elf. Have you ever seen Buddy the Elf? You know, the best way to spread, spread Christmas cheer is to sing songs loud for all to hear. You know? And he's excited, and he's manic, and he's dancing, and jumping around, and wearing his elf costume, and making people smile along the way. Have you ever seen Buddy the Elf? Yeah. Bear with me for a second here. I'm going to skip a few things here because I've changed my mind. There, there's Buddy the Elf. You guys ever seen Buddy the Elf? The wonderful way to spread, spread Christmas cheer is to sing out loud for all to hear. We can have this real excitement as we prepare for the Christmas season, and we can have people look at us and go, wow, that's a little strange. You're, you're really, really excited about this. Or we can be in that good grief place and go, ah. Now, what does any of that have to do with the gospel lesson this morning? Well, I don't know how many of you are. I'm going to take that off there. <laughs> that's distracting to me. I don't know if that's distracting to you. There we go. We'll go there. So, um, what does that have to do with the gospel lesson this morning? So, the, the gospel this morning is uh, from the writer Luke, and Luke is a social gospel writer. He's talking about how we interact with the world around us, how we spread the good news of the gospel to those who need to hear it. And so the story begins with the preparation, getting the path ready, paving a way for Christ to come into our lives. And we do that by the ways in which we interact with others, the words we say, the things that we do. Um, here in church, we have the ritual where we light candles, and the candles remind us each week of the path that we are taking to prepare our hearts for Christ to come in. So there's hope, and there's peace, and we'll be doing joy and love in the next two weeks. 
Um, and then we light the Christ candle on Christmas Eve, symbolic of the fact that we have prepared our hearts for Christ to come in. Now it's difficult to be in that place where we prepare our hearts for Christ to come in when our experience is wah, wah. It's a little easier perhaps when you're in that jovial place like Buddy. Um, that's a little easier perhaps to be in that celebratory mood. But what does Christ coming into the world actually mean? What are we preparing for? Zechariah finds out that he's going to be a father, and he's very late in life, if you will. Um, can you imagine being, well, probably the age a lot of us are, and being told you're going to be a father or a mother? Would the excitement be there? Would you be Buddy the Elf bouncing up and down? Or would you be a little more reserved with that response? Maybe a little wah <laughs> Zechariah is told that his son is going to pave the way for Christ, the Messiah that people have been waiting for for centuries, waiting for the fulfillment of the promises to Abraham, waiting for that day when God will come among God's people and will put down the oppression of the Romans, will set the people free. And in their minds, they're thinking physical liberation, lifted out of the state that they are living in. But we know that Christ comes for a spiritual liberation, not with armies and things like that. So it is an uplifting of spirits. It's more of a buddy the elf than it is clashing of swords. Zechariah is given this gift, this prophecy, this promise that John will come, that his child will come, and he's the name of John, and he's rendered mute through the entire pregnancy. Now, what we know in biblical days, and what we've talked about numerous times here, is in those days, it was the male in the family who gave the names, who was in charge of the household, who was in charge of the lineage. And so they come to this moment where John has been born, the child is in his mother's arms, Elizabeth has brought him to the temple to be um, blessed, and the priest wants to know what the child's name will be. And so the mother speaks up and says his name will be John, and the priest doesn't want to hear that, because it doesn't come from the father. And then they give Zechariah a tablet, and he writes, his name shall be John. And everyone's amazed. Did you hear that piece in the scripture lesson? Everyone was amazed that that was going to be the name of the child. Why? Because the mother's voice didn't matter in that situation. It was only the father's. And for some reason, they sinked. And here it was. And so this has to be the fulfillment of God's plan. And then Zechariah offers a blessing upon his new child. Zechariah offers prayers of blessing, of hope, laying a foundation, if you will, uh, for this child's life, for what he will do in preparing the way for Christ. In the blessing that Zechariah gives upon John, he kind of puts forth the track of his life. This is what you shall do. You are a gift from God. You are a gift meant to go out and affect the lives of others, to get them ready to receive Jesus in their hearts. And ultimately, that's our calling as followers of Christ, isn't it? Ultimately, our calling in this Advent season is to be doing spiritual preparation within ourselves to receive Christ into our hearts anew. To give ourselves the grace to go through those and eh, eh, times that we might get to the points where our hearts are leaping, like the child that was in Elizabeth's womb when she met uh, Mary for the first time as they were both pregnant. You know, the child leaped within her, like Buddy the Elf, excited. Something new is coming, something exciting is going to happen. God's presence is coming into God's people, and it's coming through us. And so you and I here today, we have a calling to fulfill. We have a foundation to lay. We have a path to put before us. And how we do that matters a lot on how others perceive who 
we are and how we live out our faith. And so one of the things we can do with that is be mindful of that in this holiday season. How do we do that? Well, I'm sure we're out and about in these days, aren't we? More so than we were last year at this time. We are out and about and we are interacting with people. And this is the time of year when everybody's patience goes from here, if they have it, to where? Here? Is this good? Maybe there? You want to go smaller? Depends on who you are and how you interact. Things get really tight. We can get to that point in the year where we're just like, you know, frazzled uh, with everything that we do. I know I've noticed an uptick in traffic when I'm driving. Any of you notice the uptick in traffic? And you all know I'm not patient when it comes to those kinds of things. So I'm learning to do some praying and self-discipline along the way on the road, which makes me a happier per person when I get to the place where I need to go and interact with people. Those are the kinds of rubber meets the road pieces of our day. But we can also lay a foundation for Christ coming into our lives in the ways in which we share gospel love. And how do we do that? Well, it's by checking in on our neighbors. It's by contacting folks that maybe we haven't seen for a while. That's how this whole Christmas card thing started. You know, you get in touch with people you haven't seen for a while, let them know you're thinking of them. It's a way of keeping connection. We can do that in the church. Look around and see who isn't here that normally you would like to be seeing. And send them a card. Not one of those guilt cards, like, well, oh, I haven't seen you in church forever. You know, not, not one of those. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about one of those cards that says, you know, I miss you, I'm thinking of you, how are you, I hope everything's good in your life. Uh, or a phone call. Or just to let you know that the door is open if you ever need to talk, or maybe call me on the phone, give them the phone number. Those are ways in which we help others to know that they're not forgotten on this journey of life, that the, the love of Christ comes to them as well, even though they're not physically right here in our midst. We lay a foundation in the words that we say, the actions that we take, and it sounds so simplistic, and I know I say that to you week after week after week, but it is really that simple. It's in showing gospel love through all that we do and say that we help others get ready open their hearts, prepare the way. I had an experience this week where I was with someone who doesn't, is not a church person, doesn't go to church, um, but we got talking. And in the midst of our talking, um, I learned this person's life story. And I learned a lot of the struggles that they carry. Uh, and it was in those conversations that I learned some things that I needed to hear in that moment, the things that I was struggling with. And by the time that conversation was over, he looked at me and he said, thank you. And I said, for what? And he said, you've just settled so much for me just by sitting and listening. I don't even know what I said. But sometimes it works just like that. You give a little of your time, you carve out a space, and God fills that void and makes connections. And so, friends, I invite us to be vigilant in these days ahead, to look for the ways that we can lay foundations, look for those openings that God gives us that provides in our lives, where we talk to others, where we interact with others, and we may not even know the effect of what we do or say. But we trust in the Holy Spirit that there is Christmas magic happening in the midst of all of that. And so we celebrate, just as Charlie Brown finds by the end of that episode a purpose to celebrate Christmas because of Linus, the interaction of Linus is the one paving the way. You know how that comedy, or that whole thing plays out, right? Linus teaches them the meaning of Christmas, and then everybody's spirits are lifted because it's no longer just a little tiny tree, but now it's in their eyes, it's a glorious thing. It's all in how we perceive things. And so you can be the foundation layers for the people that you encounter in your life every day by helping them to perceive not the scraggly tree, but the majestic glory of the Christmas tree. To perceive not the 
oppressive nature that the Christmas season can bring with all of its lists and things that need to get done. But the simplistic joy of the season and that God loves you, God sent Jesus into the world to redeem us and save us from ourselves, and then carve the space to allow God into our lives in these moments. May God's hope and peace be with you all this day and always. Amen. <laughs>
for the reminder that just as he did for John and John did for Jesus, so too we are called to prepare a way in the world, a way from your love and grace to be known to others through us. Help us, Lord, to get past those things that hold us back, that might block us from the joy of the season, that might set us aside, that we might be ambassadors of your love and grace, that we might be witnesses to all that you have done in the world, that through us others might know hope and peace and find light, especially in their times of struggle against darkness. This morning we give you thanks for this congregation of faith, for the relationships we share with one another and the opportunities we have to be together. We thank you for your God abiding providence, watching over us and bringing us safely through our times of worship together. We pray, Lord, that you continue to move in the world around us. That your spirit might bring peace in those areas of trouble. That you might seek to uplift spirits for all those struggling in this season. And that you might amplify our joys. That they might be but a reflection of the joy that we know in your presence. Lord, on this second Sunday of Advent, we come before you celebrating the blessings of our lives. Help us to take those blessings that they might become fruit for others to feel our joy. So too, we come and we lay our burdens at your feet knowing that you promise in your spirit to minister as you know best. Gracious God, we pray this morning for Alessandro, for Meredith, for Mary and Jim, for Alan and Candy and Donna, for others like them. We pray, Lord, for all as we move through this Advent and Christmas season, that you might remind us of the reason by which we gather. And Lord, each day, make us bold in our prayers before you. Make us bold to claim the name of Christian and follow our Savior in the words that we say and the actions that we take. Help us to build a world of equity and justice Peace and love. And bring us to our knees as we pray as Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
come in town in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you this morning for the blessings of our lives, for all that you have given us, and for the tokens that we give back to you in our offering. We pray your blessings upon them that as they seek to work in the missions and ministries of the church, they might effectively touch the lives of others, that they might know your love and grace. For we pray it in your name. Amen. And now as we leave this service, our service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed, so come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God the Spirit, God the Son, God the Creator, go in peace.